Well, if you had to pick a, a volume, a level of discorded discourse taking shape in Idaho right now, where would you put it? At least above five, maybe near nine? Well, hopefully our dial goes to 11 because right now it's hitting decibel levels we haven't seen in the gem state in recent memory. This pandemic, which had the potential to show our character, has certainly revealed a lot of peoples in full. Protesters disrupting local businesses over mask requirements. School board members resigning because parents can be, well, let's just say a bit much. Doors broken at the state capitol as activists tried to force their way inside during a special session of the legislature. And public health meetings being canceled because some health order objectors decided to take it too far. Madam Chair, Dr. Peterman, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I got a, a call, a call from the, the mayor and it sounds like the, the police uh, and she is requesting that we stop the meeting at this time because of the intense level of protesters in the parking lot and a concern for uh, police safety and staff safety, as well as the protesters that are at some of our board members homes right now. So I'm not sure, um, Madam Chair, uh, what we need to do other than I think we do need to, to cancel the meeting. Just an update, I just went out and talked with BB BPD. There's been one person detained, but they indicated that they have the situation under control. Sadly, it's not under control. At, it is not under control at my house and it's not under control at Diana's house. No, it wasn't under control at Diana's house as an Ada County Commissioner, Diana Laciando, who is also a board member of the Central District Health. Last night, at least three people showed up at her house, stood on the sidewalk, and I guess hope to disrupt her participation in that CDH meeting. They blasted air horns, they banged on buckets, set off their car alarms, even played clips from the movie Scarface, loud enough for the whole neighborhood to hear. All of that was bad enough, but even worse, Laciando wasn't there. She was at her office in the Ada County Courthouse. Inside her house, though, were her two young boys, alone and scared, which is why she asked to leave the meeting and rush home to her kids. Uh I, I, we're, we're going to take care of you. Can I interrupt you for just a moment? My 12 year old son is home by himself right now. And there are protesters banging outside the door. Okay. I'm going to go home and make sure he's okay. So I will reconnect with you when I get there. I just felt so helpless. No lockdown. I didn't realize at the time. You play rock? Huh? Okay that my mom had taken our dog for a quick walk and actually both my kids were there. I think what Diana needs is a little more horn. So it was my 12 year old and my eight year old um, huddled together in my son's room and they were scared and I felt so helpless and I felt like I, I let them down for not being there. And, um, you know, you decide to run for office and that's a big step to take. It's a huge step and it's scary, but you just never imagine that it's going to go to this level for your family. You guys, sometimes I admit I feel a little bit aggressive and pissed off. And, um, yeah, that's, that's how I felt. And I, um, you know, I just worry about my kids like everybody does. I think it's a loss of innocence. You know, I'm uh, I'm a fourth generation Idahoan. I'm born and raised here in Boise, and especially my oldest, you know, went through a period of time when he was um, maybe hearing things on the news or watching, uh, I don't know, TV, and he would be scared about robbers or whatever. And I would always tell him, "This is a safe place. Boise is a very safe place, and you don't have to worry." And um, that loss of innocence, um, not just that you know, maybe it isn't a safe place, but that we're specifically being targeted is scary. You minced no words with this. You held nothing back with this post that you wrote. I kind of want to read a little section that you, you posted. I am sad. I am tired. I fear that in my choosing to hold public office, my family has too often paid the price. Though I was born and raised in Idaho and have chosen to raise my own family here, I increasingly don't recognize this place. There is an ugliness and cruelty in our national rhetoric that is reaching a fevered pitch here at home, and that should worry us all. You still feel that way, I assume, right?
I do. Um, you know, in the 90s, we had this really terrible kind of national reputation that didn't really fit all of Idaho. It, it, it fit a small, very small portion of the populace. And I know that it is, this is not representative of who we are as Idaho. And if you don't wear a mask, you're going to die. That is not science. But not it increasingly is so loud and so um, just dominant. And um, it's, it's just not who we are. It's not who I've ever known of my fellow Idahoans. And no one is excited to have to be considering orders. I want people to just do the right thing voluntarily. Just, just do the right thing voluntarily. I'm not excited about any of this. Um, but we're, we're really stuck in a rock and a hard place here. So many of the questions or the comments that I get are about individual health and the mortality rate and well, I'm certainly concerned about any one person's individual, um, you know, outcomes or, or health. Mm -hmm. What we are concerned about is the hospitals tipping into crisis standards of care. And I don't think people really understand what that means. And it is not good. It is a scoring system that decides who gets treatment or not. And for us to tip into that, and that's something that's reserved for wartime, um, that's unacceptable to me. This was not anywhere near what you guys expected when you got into this. I probably that's the understatement of the year, I'm sure. Yeah, I, uh, you know, septic system permits were the most controversial thing up until about uh, March. So, yeah. and you know, we've taken it on and I'm, I am, I am grateful to be in a position to serve. Um, and I'm not afraid of making hard decisions, um, but it has come at, at a big cost to my family. And, um, and I'm just sad about that. It's obviously wearing on you from last night and today. How do you get through? I mean, how do you, how do you, how does something like this affect you in the short term or even the long term? Well, I'm, you know, I'm almost out of office, so I've got uh, a few weeks left and I, you know, said I would do my very best right up until the end and I'm going to try. So that's, that's where I'm at. And um, I have the strength of my family and I have my faith and, um, and I'll just do the very best I can. As if this was a one-time incident, last night was the second time protesters showed up at Laciando's house. They've shown up again today for the third time. Boise police had to show up to escort Laciando out of her house to safety because she was afraid. This is what we've come to at this point. The next scheduled CDH board meeting isn't until next Tuesday, but that could certainly change. No word on the agenda just yet. But Boise police, they did show up to Laciando's house last night. By the time they got there, the protesters were gone. They were only there for about 20 minutes. Laciando's neighbors did sign disturbing the peace citations and Boise police is in the process of getting three arrest warrants for those who showed up at her house. In her post from this morning that we referenced there, Laciando called out the governor for this patchwork of health orders around the state, among other things. She's asking Governor Brad Little to rise to the moment and lead. Do something rather than just say something. We wanted to ask the governor about this, but we were told he wasn't available today. He has a press conference scheduled for tomorrow. And I know there are some of you out there saying we aren't covering both sides of this story. What about what the protesters were protesting? Believe me when I say there are not two sides to showing up to cause alarm at an elected official or a volunteer board member's house. There's not. And those protesters outside the CDH building during the meeting, well, they were given a lot of leeway. They could have been trespassed off the property, but they weren't. All of this, all of what has happened over the last several months in Idaho, in Boise in the last week, in the last 24 hours, has been a lot. A lot of negativity, a lot of people scared, a lot of people worried about where we're going from here. The bad news is getting headlines right now, we know this. But it's also worth knowing the good. It's worth remembering, like what replaced the reprehensible stickers left at the Anne Frank Memorial last night or Tuesday night, or today I should say, the good and those who promote it. Like it says, we are everywhere and we choose love.